You are invited to a party, a budget party. What is it? How's it work? When do you do it? What's the deal? Find all that out and more in this episode of the Wallet Win Podcast. Recently in our Wallet Win Academy community, there was a question that came up about budgeting Ooh. and specifically around how can I make this an enjoyable experience for <laughs> both uh, members of our household. This was a married couple and one of them, you know, t- by temperament found the budgeting process maybe a little bit more fun, exhilarating. And the, and the other one found it to be a little more frustrating and um, for lack of a better terms, less of a, a party and they were not the most excited about it. More like pulling teeth. I'm trying to say this very nicely. One of them didn't want to be budgeting, didn't (laughs) want to come to the budget meeting, didn't want to sit down and plan the spending Mm -hmm. for their household. But it is so important that both of you do this. If you're married, both of you need to be involved in the budgeting process and setting the plan for how your money is going to reflect your priorities and get you closer to your goals this month. Yes. And so while both of these spouses wanted the power of budgeting and both believed in it, it was the actual budgeting process that was causing friction. And there were a few things causing some breakdowns. Mm -hmm. And we were able to introduce to this couple the concept of hosting a budget party. And that's what we're going to do with you here today. It's going to be, we're going to get in there quick. We're going to get in there practically. And we are going to map out how to host a budget party because it's going to communicate to everyone that is sitting down to budget that this is not only an exciting thing to do, but it's also enjoyable, it's fun, it's protecting, it's not a tool of weaponry. Uh, (laughs) In some personality arrangements, it could turn into that. Uh, It's safe, and it helps you get to those goals every time. So we're gonna map out the budget party that we recommend you have mm-hmm. if you currently don't have this system going in your in your household right now. Yeah, a budget party can be really helpful, especially for those of you starting out to budget. Mm-hmm. If you're a bit newer to this, still kinda need to rem- remind yourself, oh yeah, we gotta make a budget, you gotta find that time to do it together uh, to really make it a habit that's going to affect your life in a very positive way. So the budget party, I mean, I'd say we don't necessarily have a budget party every month now. We're 10 years into budgeting now. (laughs) uh, And so the the habit is very firmly established. I'd say budgeting is its own reward now. Now, yeah, exactly. Just the budget itself is the party. (laughs) That doesn't sound (laughs) crazy to you. You might need a budget party. But where we began was exactly with the budget party. Party. And I'm going to go ahead. We're going to break that down for you step by step now. So, step one in the budget party is carve out a time Mm -hmm. where both members of the household who, you know, are married and make making decisions on how this money is going to be spent are present. Mm -hmm. Now, find a time that works for both of you. Preferably, if you do have children when they are not running around, interrupting, maybe like an after bedtime situation Mm -hmm. just because you want to have the mental space to be able to enter into this conversation not just the physical space in your calendar yeah and not just present like we're both going to show up but you can both show up that one of you isn't half asleep which is desperate to get to bed uh and will be willing to agree to anything to end this Mm -hmm. both need to be Willing to just get sure. in there and do the thing. Both right. be present. So yeah, even if you have to get a babysitter, just find a time where this is going to happen every month. Mm-hmm. Preferably right before the next month begins. You're going to sit down and maybe one of you has already done the heavy lifting of taking the money that you have available and assigning it amongst the various categories. And so if that's already happened, then it's going to make the process a little bit easier and probably faster faster, but it's not a prerequisite Mm -hmm. all right so you've carved out this time tuesday night 8 30 p.m we're we're meeting at the kitchen table you shook on it okay here we go it's tuesday now now we gotta make it a party now we gotta make it a party all right so it's almost 8 30 what you're gonna do is find a tune that you enjoy if you need any help we highly 
recommend Jock Jams <laughs> to get you pumped If up. you happen to be a millennial, basically the Jock Jam soundtracks from the 90s were epic. And if you need some more inspiration, go to walletwin.com slash jams. And that'll take you to a Spotify playlist of some of our favorite budget jams. Yeah, so you're going to kick off the meeting, you know, maybe say a prayer. Then you turn on the the the, the Your jam, the killer jam. If you're the dancing type, you're up. You're just you're trying. The goal here is to get the blood flowing. If you were getting tired, you know, you're mm. getting the adrenaline a little bit up. You know, don't rev yourself crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy definitely could do that <laughs> if you got really into it. Um, you're just going to want to be, you want to be awake. You want to be communicating to yourself that this is something exciting. Mm -hmm. And here we are, we're uniting through this fun situation. And now we're sitting down, we're ready to go. Yep. But wait, we're not ready to talk numbers just yet. We are going to be passing out these snacks and beverages. (laughs) It's not a party without some sneaky snacks. So whatever you love to drink, whether it's chamomile tea or red wine. A tasty brew. Doesn't matter. Some nice ice water. Yep, a fizzy water is what we like to call it in our household, the carbonated ones with the the lime uh, or whatever flavor. Bring that, have a drink for both of you, and you're going to want to have a thought-out snack, preferably something that you both really enjoy. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and this should be something special. It's not like you just opened a goldfish thing, unless you really love goldfish, you know, from the pantry and you threw it on a plate. You want to pre-think this out. Make this something really nice. Again, because this is going to help so much (laughs) with whether it's you, whether it's your spouse, on wanting this budget party to happen and wanting you yourself or them to be there. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's going to, oh, well, I'll show up for the food. Uh, (laughs) And that might be what it takes in the beginning. Isn't that why you go to parties sometimes? <laughs> that might be what it takes in the beginning. And that is totally fine. That's why this exists. Mm-hmm. To make it fun, make it something you want to, to, to happen, something you look forward to, so that you get to the meat yes. of the party, which is budgeting. Right. So you've, you've danced. You've got the blood flowing. You have sat down with a snack and a beverage. You're relaxed. And you are ready to talk numbers. Mm. And before we get into that, <laughs> what, talking numbers, the reason we do it is because of what they represent. Mm. Every single time you sit down and create a budget, you are one step closer to whatever that next best goal or priority is for you and your family. That is exciting stuff. Mm-hmm. And so before you're at, tempted to go into the Oh, a budget is a drag. (laughs) No, it's not. It is the tool and the means by which I get to accomplish and live out the dreams, the goals, the priorities, and the desires that God has put on my heart. Mm -hmm. And he's calling me forth too. And so that's exciting stuff. So let's talk about it. All right. So it's time to budget. You've got your, uh, your preferred budgeting method, whether that's a stack of envelopes, a stack of envelopes and a stack of cash. Mm-hmm. It's a spreadsheet. It's a piece of paper and a pencil. It's our favorite budgeting app, YNAB. Whatever it is, you it's going to help you make a budget. That's what we want you to use. Yes. So you've got that open. You've got your categories set. And you know the money that you've got available to budget. Now's the fun part. Now is when mm-hmm. you get to tell that money what to do. You tell, hey, you guys, you're going to go buy our groceries this month. You, you're going to the heating bill, whatever it is. You, keep a roof over our head. Yes, please. So that's what you do. Uh, You set out the categories, the the, the amount of money you want to spend on each thing. And of course, the first thing that you always fund is kind of those Mm non-negotiables, the things that we just mentioned. They all have to get funded. You have to eat. Okay? You put the money there first. And then you begin going towards maybe some of those other goals that you want to do. You want to get off... You want to get out of debt, so you're putting Mm -hmm. extra towards that. You want to plan a nice date night, and so you're funding that category. Mm -hmm. So there's always the, we're funding the stuff that's just got to get done first, and then we're working our way down by our priorities. And that's why it's so important that both of you are present, because anybody could just fill in the heating bill, electricity, and the mortgage. Like, that's easy. 
but it takes both of you to set the priorities to or interpret the priorities of the family in this budget. Mm -hmm. So figure out how much do we want to give and where or to who. How much do we want to set aside for whatever goal that we've got right now? And where, if we really want to go for those goals, where are we going to maybe trim down here or there so that there's more money available for our goal? And those decisions are decisions you need to make together because they're going to affect both of you. So when that is the case, you got to do it together. Exactly. So how it typically happens in the Texera household, and it was Ooh. it was always this way. Peel back the curtain. Even in the earliest days of Budget Party. I would pre-get with the budget. Absolutely. And I would <laughs> I would kind of give my first it was I always viewed it as a rough draft. Mm -hmm. This is just draft one. It is meant to be shifted. It is meant to be edited. It is meant to be changed. Why was that so important to 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 understand? In that the reason is because this is not just Amanda controlling our entire life. Mm. One, if that is how it's gonna be. Eventually, it'll break down and I will end up resenting my husband because that is toxic and it shouldn't exist in any area of our life where one person is basically controlling and making the decisions on everything and the other person's along for the ride. Not happening. <laughs> and so that came, it communicated that to me um, that I didn't want to set myself in that position. But then it communicated to Jonathan that he is as valuable as I am. Even though I pre-did the work mm -hmm. on the numbers, your opinion, your thoughts, your questions are valid. They hold weight and they get to shape how the end budget is going to play out. Yeah, instead of just bringing it to me for either the, the yes, the rubber stamp or the veto, like the yes or no, it's more of, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. What do you think? What haven't I seen? What haven't I thought of? Because mm -hmm. somebody's, it's that stuff has to get put down there anyway. Somebody's got to do it. And mm -hmm. so you, you do that part. I do that, right? just to make it quicker. Mm -hmm. And then we look at it together. Oh, what about this? We got this coming up. Why is this in there? And we, it's a real conversation. It's not just, because uh, I, I want to be involved. I want to have my say. I, I want to make sure that we are using the resources we have as as well as possible for our family and for others. But sitting down and, ooh, ee, scheming at mm -hmm. that initial 30,000-foot view, that's not necessarily the best use of your skill set, and it doesn't necessarily bring you joy, but it does to me. Yeah, and so, you, know, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you want to find whoever that is uh, to maybe do that initial rough draft. And if, if it's neither of you. If it is neither of you. That's another reason why the budget party Mm -hmm. can be so good because again it's, now you it's both this do it desirable thing it's this fun thing that makes you want to show up mm -hmm. and do the budgeting yes so you go about your meeting you are sipping the wine you're eating the cheese and crackers you're talking about you know oh man we're gonna get a payoff a thousand dollars of debt this month that feels good oh but wait okay it's also our anniversary so mm -hmm. okay let's talk about okay maybe we will not go out to eat as a family um, you know, two times this month, we'll go hit Chipotle once, but now we have money to, you know, either get a gift for each other or to go to the movies or something. You know, you get to mm -hmm. make those decisions and have those conversations in real time, which is the fun stuff to talk about. Yeah. The budget party, you know, it also, so it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. giving you information, but I think that there's also uh, an added benefit to sometimes you're going to notice that the numbers aren't stretching as deeply as you'd like. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, um, you know, most people that start the whole budgeting process, they feel like they got an overnight raise just because they now know what their money is doing and maybe they've eliminated overspending or wasteful spending and they've just recaptured a couple hundred dollars a month in their budget, which then goes a long ways in the categories that they actually want to be spending in. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes... You will have those moments when you just, the money isn't going far enough as far as you'd like it to. You've covered, you know, some of those needs mm -hmm. and maybe just a couple of wants, but you're not really making the progress. And then at your budget party now, you get to make an educated decision on what to do about that. And that can be really freeing because chances are you have somebody in your relationship, maybe that's more like me who will just silently carry stress on their back, feeling like they need to hold the whole thing up and the weight of the world is on them. 
and like that they, they shouldn't burden other people with it. But this is a space then for one of the persons, if they're feeling that way, to just say, look, this is just too dang tight. Mm -hmm. And this hurts. And you know, bringing up frustrations at a budget party might seem counterintuitive, but really it's gonna allow you to have that conversation of, okay, great, we need to actually pair off three or four of these things that we are doing that we really don't need to be doing right now so that we can get more breathing room. Or look, one of us needs to either work some extra hours or find a side hustle, or maybe it's time to actually go for that promotion mm -hmm. because we need some extra cash in here. And then, although that conversation might've felt a little hard or painful, it allowed the person who maybe was feeling stressed to have more breathing room which is gonna make their life enjoyable between those budget parties. Mm -hmm. And it also, I mean, you might feel a little awkward, a little uncomfortable having that conversation, especially if you're the one bringing it up. Mm. But you can either have it then, where it's halfway expected, yeah. and probably <laughs> received well, or you can have it uh, you know, in the car on your way to dinner, uh, unexpected, tempers are flaring, everybody's hangry, uh, one of those two places is going to be a better, more productive place to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And so by, by doing that, and also the other person, if you're a little bit more like me, <laughs> might be totally oblivious to some of this stuff. And it's not that you don't, they don't want to help out. They don't want to find a solution. They don't want to make things as, as great as they can for their family. They're just not even thinking about it right now. Just weren't aware, but the budget made them see it. Mm -hmm. And so by bringing it up here now, right? Because this is when the two of you are sitting down, looking at the money, looking at the goals, everything's on the other side of the table. And now when you bring this up, that's over there too. Instead of later, where it might get brought up kind of against one another. Mm -hmm. well, we never do this. And then there's, there's going to be a tendency to blame each other, to look for all these, these, these reasons why. Uh, it's a failing of, of someone else. And so right now, if you bring it up, you get to tackle it as a team, as a couple, and take care of it together. Then after, as you've gone through the entire budget and everybody agrees, like they have both of their you know, interests represented, early in our, in our budgeting journey, I will admit, you know, the categories that I remembered got mm -hmm. funded, you know, home goods so I could get some pillows yeah. uh, or, you know, Amanda's fun money um, or toiletries so I could go out and buy that makeup I wanted. But then Jonathan wasn't as good at remembering stuff. So you just... Not till like the middle of the month <laughs> and then it's too late. <laughs> and then, you know, I'd be like, oh, sorry, you didn't bring that up at the budget meeting. That stinks. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we both... I had to kind of jog his brain a little, you know, mm -hmm. as time went on, just because I'm more naturally gifted at being able to think through and remember some stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so that both of us have things that we are interested in are m represented in the budget. Yeah. You know, and uh, that was important. It can't just be a, a one sided, you know, the money tilts towards one person in the house and never happens to tilt towards the other. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure both of you are getting represented in ways that are meaningful to each of you. And then once you've done that, you shake hands, and now you do your very best to live that budget out for that upcoming month. Mm -hmm. And personally in the Texera household, we are totally fine with the other person doing what we call getting fudgy with the budgie, meaning they're out and about and they see a killer deal on something we have been wanting for the family. Uh-oh, but wait a minute, there's only $30 in, you know, outdoors, lawn, whatever, whatever that category is, and they found this, this great deal. It's up to that person, if it's under a certain amount, to just make the decision. Okay, great. I'll pull from this and I'll fund this instead. Mm -hmm. We're good to go. Over a certain dollar amount, usually about a hundred bucks, we'll consult the other person. Mm -hmm. So before you go and make a $250 purchase, and then now I have to feel the effects of the fallout of readjusting the budget mm -hmm. that that might be painful um small, you'll, small you'll adjustments small won't adjustments be that feelable they won't have a big impact on the plan you already made together mm -hmm. but larger adjustments while they might be the best thing for you guys to do right then you do need to talk it over because it is going to have a bigger effect on the plan that you already agreed to yeah yep 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 well, there you have it there you have it. That is the budget party. Budget party. Let us know 
what some of your favorite budget jams are, mm -hmm. maybe we'll add them to the playlist. Or better yet, tag us on social media. Ooh. We are at WalletWin over on Instagram. Um, we're also on Facebook. Yeah, wherever you'll find we're, social media. Wherever medias. we are. At WalletWin. At WalletWin. And take a picture or a video of your next budget party. Bring us in. We want to party with you. So tag us. Um, share this with a friend who you think it could benefit. And... Give us a rating on iTunes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to think of all the things I'm supposed to mention at the end of a podcast episode. Smash that like <laughs> button. Subscribe. Yeah, but thank you very much for tuning in. It's a pleasure to be here with you, mm -hmm. to serve you, and to help you live out your life's mission with your money. Until next time. Bye for now.